Um, I'll always dream high and have high expectations of myself. If I put the work in, anything's possible. Shabante Aceon Gilgis Alexander, born July 12, 1998. Other than having one of the longest names in NBA player history, Shea Gilgis Alexander is also a really good basketball player. He's actually, as of right now, a top three candidate for MVP in the league, and if he wins, would be the third OKC MVP in the last decade. Fourth, if we're pulling from the OKC tree and including James Harden. Shea, this season, is averaging a career high in points at 31.5 per game, rebounds nearly six a game, assists 6.4, steals 2.4 a game, and shooting percentage 55% up from 51 last season. Speaking of last season 22-23, he was no slouch there either, making the all-star team after averaging over 30 points for the first time and establishing himself as arguably the best player 25 years old and under, and one of the best in the league, period. He's doubling down in back-to-back -back seasons, staking his claim and bullying your favorite players along the way. Although slight in frame, his post play this season has been spectacular, leading all guards in post scoring efficiency at 82%. This is all coming from a guy that was the 11th pick in the 2018 draft, three point guards selected in front of him and he just might win an MVP and a championship before them all. He's the only other player in a toss up with Luka that may end up the best player from his draft class altogether. To think he was actually traded after just his rookie year for Paul George and like five first round picks, Gallinari and pick swaps by who? Doc Rivers and went on to OKC to become unstoppable and looking like he could one day become the best player in the league sooner than anyone saw coming with a team around him that's poised to compete for championships before long. What I like most about him is the confidence in which he carries himself in general from his fashion, which I'm not the biggest fan of, but you could tell he at least has the confidence to pull off the fits he chooses, and on the court, I really believe his confidence is unmatched right now as well. When he brings the ball up now, it's like he knows he's better than anyone he faces, and what's different this year is he doesn't look like he just wants to win and look good. He wants to demolish and belittle his defender. Could be Derek White, Kobe White, Steph Curry, Seth Curry, Anthony Black, Jeffrey Blue, it doesn't matter to Shea right now. He's grown into a fun player to watch with his shifty game, relentless attack mindset, his developed skill in just his sixth season, and again his ability to now physically outmatch his defender, sometimes embarrassing them in the process. Underrated in high school, straight up took Quade Green's starting spot in college after initially coming off the bench, traded after a solid rookie season to now an MVP candidate and lock for back-to-back -back NBA All-Stars. Shea Gilgis Alexander is here ladies and gentlemen. Here are three of the biggest reasons I believe he hit his growth spurt. Let's talk about it. Salute to Game Time 76 for this request. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth. Let's get it. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Shea Gilgis Alexander is a 6'6 point guard shooting guard from Ontario, Canada, whose mom was an Olympic athlete in track and field and his father's love for the game placed him around basketball at an early age. He began his career playing in Canada, but for his junior and senior seasons he transferred to Hamilton Heights in Tennessee in search of development and better competition. Both seasons he was one of the best guards in the country but still developing and climbing to the level of the top competition in his class. His senior season he averaged 18.4 points, 4.4 rebounds and 4 assists per game, ranked the best guard in the state, the second best combo guard in the country and top 20 player overall. He initially committed to Florida but reopened his recruitment and later signed with Kentucky. He was scheduled to back up hyped prospect Quade Green, but after 13 games, it was obvious he was one of the best players on the team and started at point from then on. Growth spurt number one, playing himself into a lottery pick. 
To understand the growth spurt story of Shea Gilgis Alexander, you have to go all the way back to when I believe his confidence first allowed him to feel he was one of the best players of his class. Leaving high school, Shea, you have to remember, was a four-star recruit, ranked 20th overall by 247 Sports, and not a McDonald's All-American like Jalen Hans, Trayvon Duvall, Trey Young, or Quade Green, who competed with Trey Young and Duvall for the best point guards in the class. Going into Kentucky, it was widely known Quade Green would start over him, as the hype for Green in high school matched Trey Young, as they were actually seen as equally talented tiny guards of the future. Shea was a part of a seven-man freshman class where all six of the other recruits were ranked higher than him. Some even questioned if he'd get any time his freshman year, much less become a starter after 13 games, the second leading scorer on the team behind Knox and able to leave after just one season and become a lottery pick. Looking back at it, what was really happening is Shea's development was moving at a much faster pace, which tells me he either had a sense of urgency about himself and outworked his pairs, or he hit his potential later than those pairs. But when it hit, the ceiling was higher. A great example, Ja Morant. Underrated in high school, but his sophomore year in college, he was far more developed than his class and continues to develop into a superstar in the league. Kentucky players, when speaking about Shea in practice, say he was easily the best player on the floor and everyone knew he would start eventually by their first month together. He did and he took off, averaging 14 points, 4 rebounds and 5 assists, shooting 40% from 3, although only taking a little over 1 a game. His college literal growth spurt helped him become an NBA lottery pick in a team's future plans giving him the guaranteed time to continue developing. Growth spurt number two, being traded by the Clippers. Doc Rivers in hindsight says he never wanted to trade Shea after his rookie year, which I think is pretty convenient to say now, but if he had a chance to do it again, would probably make the same choice. We all would have at the time. If we can't use what we know Shea to be now, 99% of us would have given him up in order to essentially land Kawhi Leonard, who he was really traded for. I know it says Paul George on paper, but Kawhi Leonard, who was hot as fish grease after the 2018-19 season, coming off one of the greatest one-year stays in the history of the league, probably the best, winning Toronto their first championship ever, a year after the Spurs pretty much gave up on him. He was hitting game-winning shots and played dominant basketball, defeating the Hurt Warriors trying to win their third straight. Every team wanted Kawhi after that, who was set to be a free agent summer 2019. He could have asked for just about anything and teams would have given it up. But for Kawhi, he wanted to play with Paul George and he wanted to play in LA, just not with LeBron. My nigga. <laughs> The Clippers, eager to finally land a superstar and be able to compete for championships, hottest guy in the league, would have moved a mountain to land him and keep him from going to the Lakers. Giving up a rookie averaging 10 points per game and 3 assists probably seemed like a steal at the time. Draft picks? Here, take them all. Just give us what Kawhi wants. The trade happened and Shea was on his way to OKC, the best thing that could have happened to his career. It gave him his own team in rebuild mode after losing Chris Paul the following year, in a role he could further develop outside the spotlight. Growth spurt number three, an extremely high ceiling. Lastly, what I think is underrated about Shea Gilgis Alexander is the extremely high ceiling he has that allowed him to continue growing and improving his game literally every season. He's almost doing it across the board too. He's gotten better as a rebounder, playmaker for his teammates, shooter, foul line included, scoring a tremendous improvement, defense, his 2.4 steals a game currently leads the league, and most importantly, swag and confidence. I truly believe this is the first season Shea Gilgis Alexander believes or knows he's the best player in the NBA, at least best point guard. He has no respect. I watched him bully Steph Curry on both ends. Bully young guys, old guys, just unstoppable all year and he barely celebrates it. 
It's like he expects it to happen, then moves on for seconds and thirds. Feasting in a year, he's clearly establishing that over the next 5-10 years, he'll be in the conversation for top players in the league. He's already to me the best guard right now. No one expected this to be the case, but obviously he has an insane work ethic and it's finally paying off. All young players out there, you have to believe ceiling is what you make it. You can literally work to make your ceiling higher, that's the good thing, and Shea is a great example of that. Add to that, he does have natural gifts like his 6'6 frame that allows him the extra room to get his shot off on defenders and helps his post game, which is one of the best already in the league. All in all, Shea Gilgis Alexander is scary. The guy has a mentality and chip on his shoulder he never seems satisfied with. His confidence is overflowing right now, which will only make him better and better. Barring injury, I really think he'll win an MVP award in his future and compete for championships at the same time. Great player, great example, exciting future ahead, and for these reasons, I believe he hit his insane growth spurt. Salute, much respect, it's your boy JC Stunning Growth, and I'm out.